So you're looking to start selling your Google Sheets, you've created an amazing spreadsheet to sell, and now you're wondering what to do next. We're gonna walk you through all the steps to make sure that your spreadsheet is functioning properly, that it's protected, and it looks pretty, so that we're ready to use it in mockups, and that we can hand over the link to our customer. Hi, my name is Melinda from Spreadsheetables, and we are talking about everything with passive income and Google Sheets. Okay, so let's dive right into how we would prepare our sheets before we sell them. Now, the first thing we're going to do is test our spreadsheet. That is super important before we deliver something. Now, if you're wondering how to test it, it's simply using it as if you were the customer. So you wanna go ahead and fill out the cells, click the check boxes, do anything that your customer would be doing on the spreadsheet. If you have multiple tabs, make sure you are entering information where you need to to see if the charts are populating and the conditional formatting is working properly and everything else that you have set up in the spreadsheet. For this example, we just have a checklist that's pretty simple, so we know it's good. The next thing I like to do is hide the grid lines. It's already hidden on this one, but I'm going to show you how to do that. If you go to View, Show, and then click Grid Lines, you're going to see all the grid lines that you typically see when you were building your spreadsheet. Now you don't have to do this, but we think it makes a really nice option if we get rid of those. It just cleans everything up a little bit. So I'm gonna go view, show, and click the grid lines to make them disappear. The next thing we wanna do is go in and protect any cells that have important formulas that we don't want to get accidentally broken when our user goes in to enter their information. In this case here, this checklist that we had shown you earlier actually has, um, we put in a formula here for this moving emoji. So you can see as I check it, it moves. So it has a formula in there that we don't want somebody to come in and say, delete the whole thing by accident. So what we're gonna do is we're going to click on that cell and we're going to protect it by going to data protect sheets and ranges. And so you'll have this menu pop open here and we're gonna to click to set the permissions. Now there's a couple options here. We could select this restrict who can edit this range. And right now it's set to only myself. Now with this, if I go and share the spreadsheet with somebody else and give them a like force a copy to open for them, they become the new owner. So in that case, that would be them here who can um, edit these ranges. So what we wanna do is select this first option that says show a warning when editing this range. That way, no matter who's editing it, it's gonna come up with a warning. I'm gonna click done. Now, sometimes we have a separate spreadsheet that has a bunch of data in it that isn't necessary for the user to be entering information in. In fact, they don't even need to see it. If that's the case, we can hide that spreadsheet. So we're gonna pretend that's this spreadsheet here. You can click on this arrow and click on hide sheet. And that's gonna tuck it away and prevent any confusion with your consumer and prevent any formulas from being broken. Now, if you need to find that spreadsheet again, you can click on this little menu here and it'll show you the ones that are hidden and it'll be slightly grayed out when it's hidden. Now, if your spreadsheet's a little bit more complex than a checklist, you may want to have an instruction sheet included in there. You'll often see people call it a start here tab. So when we click on this, we have instructions here. Even if your spreadsheet is super simple, it's nice to include a start here tab because you can include your branding and a way for them to reach out to you. You can include things like your shop link and your Facebook group if you have one. This is a great spot to include your shop if you have one on your own website. We always wanna be moving traffic over to our own website. You can include an opt-in for your email as well. On this page, you can include written instructions or a video instructions or a combination of both. Probably the easiest is a video walkthrough of how your spreadsheet works. The next thing we like to do is start preparing to create mockups for our spreadsheet. And what we need to do is fill in our spreadsheet with some base information so that we can take a screenshot with it in use. That way, if you have charts and things, those charts are filled out and your spreadsheet looks really full. Once you have it filled out, you're going to go to File and click on Print. And then you can take a screenshot from here. I would just go like this and take the colored region, and that's gonna go over to my downloads to use in a mock-up. 
Now once we have a screenshot of our spreadsheet, we can go over into Canva to create a mock-up. Now a mock-up is basically just displaying your spreadsheet. You want to make it visually appealing while also calling out some of the great features of your spreadsheet. I'm going to take that screenshot and drag it into Canva. Now this mock-up I had already created and this is using two elements. There's a computer back here and then this grid. Now you can easily find the computer and the grid in Canva. So if you go into elements and scroll down, the grid is here. So I just use this single grid and for a computer, we can just type it up here, type computer mock-up and I'm going to click on graphics to see all of these and so you can simply just insert one of these and then put the grid over top. You can add a title, a subtitle and then call out some benefits down below. For example, we said Google Sheets, it's easy to use and instant download. Now I'm going to go into my uploads where we took that screenshot and I'm going to drag it into this grid here. I'm going to change the size of it so it fills up the space and that's all it takes to create a mock-up. Quite often people will create various different mock-ups so that they can show different benefits and features of their spreadsheet but at a very base level once you know how to create one you can create any different variations you'd like. Now to use this you're just going to download it so you're going to click on share and click on download. This one's set to PNG and I'm just going to download the one I want, which is page three, click done, and then click download. Now, one of the last things we need to do is create a PDF thank you page. Now, what happens when somebody makes a purchase is that they're going to receive a document which has the links to the spreadsheet that they purchased. Now, this is an example of what ours looks like. We include our company name at the top with a discount code. We thank them for the order and we include the link here in this block. We also offer an opt-in to get them on our email list and we invite them to join our free Facebook group. We also leave an email address so they can contact us if they ever need some support for their spreadsheet. Now, if you're wondering how to get that link for your spreadsheet, let's go back to it. You're going to want to make sure this is titled how you want it first before you copy it. And then you're going to click on share. And under general access here, you're going to go from restricted to anyone with the link. You're going to keep it as viewer. If you change it to editor, they will change your spreadsheet, unfortunately, for you. So you don't want that option available. You want to keep it on viewer and then you're going to copy the link. Now we're back in Canva with our PDF thank you file and we're going to click on this box here where we've created our own button. And here's where the link goes. So I'm going to click that. It currently has a different link. I'm just going to replace that. Now I've pasted it in. And you'll see at the very end of the link, it says this edit sharing section here. We actually want to take everything past this forward slash and delete it and then type in copy. And that's going to force a copy to open for them. I'm going to click enter and it's going to save that link there for us. Now, when I go to share this, I'm going to download it and I'm going to download it as a PDF and then click the download button. And that is the file that I'm going to upload into the marketplace or my website as the product that they receive when they make a purchase. Now, just to show you what happened. Now we had made edits to that URL and put copy at the end of the link. And here's why we did that. It forces to open a copy instead of a view only. So with view only, the customer would have only been able to see the spreadsheet and they would have been frustrated because they don't realize that they need to make a copy of it before they can make any edits. By adding copy at the end of it, it forces this screen to open and to make a copy right away. So in our mind, it creates a little bit of a better customer service experience. Once you've done all those steps, you wanna create a title description and choose appropriate tags, all that have your keywords that we had talked about earlier from your research. Then all you need to do is look at pricing, selecting something that's competitive yet fair and listing your product to sell.